In the last class, I was discussing about representations, especially relation to photo representation, and how photo is explaining uh, representations, the theory of mind. I have uh, uh, already shown you some of the points of which I will be discussing in this um, topic. And let us see this PPT uh, representational theory of mind, hypothesis of language of thought, semantic engines, computational theory of mind, propositional attitudes, computational representational theory of mind and intentional realism. And in this, I have explained about the representational theory of mind and then how this representational theory of mind is related to a hypothesis of language of thought and semantic engines. And then today, I will be discussing about the computational theory of mind, which is very important to know about the representational theory of mind, because this computational theory of mind plays vital role in Fodorian concept of mind. And Fodor has explained mind uh, not only in terms of mechanistic, uh, but also in the non-mechanistic way uh, as uh, it is shows, because there is a dilemma in Fodorian concept of mind uh, that will be very clear if we go through all these things. For the, as we uh, have seen in the last few lectures that computational theory of mind uh, maintains that the mental processes are uh, computational processes. Uh, the theory of computation has been has become more popular after the publications of Alan Turing in famous article on computing machinery and intelligence. And uh, this thesis explains the how the machine is functioning in a mechanistic way, uh, the possibility of mechanistic uh, mind. Uh, the Turing thesis maintains that machines have intelligence and this intelligence capacity can find from the the mechanical devices and Turing thesis is said to be a program in abstract uh, symbolism. In the other words, if you see a Turing machine can perform symbol manipulation, the symbols appearing of the machines are read by its scanner and are altered by its printer in accordance with a set of rule laid down in the uh, program. The machine operates the program. The various formulas have their formal roles in virtue of their syntactic properties and not due to their semantic uh, contents. That is to say that a Turing machine does not have semantic contents. Turing said the reader must accept it as a fact that the digital computers can be constructed and uh, indeed has been uh, constructed according to the principles we have described and that they can in fact mimic the action of, of a human computer very closely. Uh, but if we see according to Jerry uh, Fodor, machine operations are uh, operations on symbols on semantically interpreted objects. Thus, it is entirely possible that the machine could operate differently uh, upon symbols according to the formal rules without bringing in the semantic content of the symbols. Uh, the computational theory of uh, mind argues that uh, mental states are identical uh, with functional or computational states uh, and that mental processes are those operates specified by the machine table that uh, adequately describes mental functions. And uh, if you see, this means that uh, the uh, mental states and processes are analogous to the states and operations of a uh, Turing machines. And like a Turing machines that specifies all that formally specifiable symbol manipulations, uh, the mind too is a symbol manipulating. A device according to computational thesis of uh, mind, the way even if Turing is explaining. And that is to say that the mind is a software for which the brain is a hardware. And uh, both the systems performs uh, computations on the symbols in their uniquely specified ways, both are de devoid of semantic properties. B but moreover, both sets of symbols should be semantically interpreted and it is due to the semantic interpretations of the formula of the program 
that we can say that the machine operates are rule governed and meaning uh, full. Uh, similarly, because the symbols upon which uh, computational operations are performed are semantically interpreted, the operations of a computer are described in intentional idioms. In short, the semantic interpretations help us to understand the computer as a semantic engines. As we have seen in the last sections, uh, semantic engines are possible in effect uh, given an interpretation of a formal systems with true axioms and truth preserving rules. The semantics of the formal systems will take care of uh, itself uh, that is to say if you take care of syntax the semantic will take care of itself. A right kind of formal systems interpretations a machine can handle the meaning. If we are not interpreting in the right way then machine cannot handle the meaning. This basic insight is the underlying theory of cognitive science and artificial intelligence. Uh, the argument that the computational theory of mind is posing that mental processes are computational uh, in a Turing machine that establishes the legitimacy of the program of artificial intelligence. Computational processes are both formal and symbolic. They are symbolic because they are performed on symbols. Uh, similarly, the mental processes are operations uh, on some kind of symbols like object in virtue of uh, n form or roughly the syntax of these symbols. In this connection, it would be relevant to understand the structure of the propositional attitudes and how they can be computationally analyzed. Uh, the mental representations including the propositional attitudes constitutes the bedrock of uh, the computational and the representational theory of mind. Let us see the propositional attitudes, because uh, it is very necessary to explain uh, to understand the computational theory of mind, how this semantic is possible and if you take care of syntax, uh, semantic is possible. As we know generally, propositional attitudes are the attitudes towards propositions. In our day to day life, we have been struggling with our mental processes, the conception of mentality bristles with the uh, uh, notions like belief, desire, intentions, hope and etcetera, many other things like intentional attitudes. These attitudes are identified by their uh, propositional uh, contents. For example, a belief that snow is white is uh, identified by the proposition that snow is white. On the other hand, propositional attitudes are pervasive in our descriptive, explanatory and justificatory practices. But in this sections, we shall see that propositional attitudes are relations between organism and the external environment. Before analyzing the above point, now we have to clarify the relationship between intentionality and propositional attitudes. Intentionality, we have to go back to Sorlian concept of intentionality. According to John Searle, intentionality is the property of many mental states and events by which they are directed at or about or of object and state of affairs in the world. Uh, this will be very clear if we go through this example. If I have a belief, it must be a belief that such and such is the case. If I have a fear, it must be a fear of something or that something will occur. Uh, similarly, if I have a desire, it must be a desire to do something. The ever grammar of intentionality shows that the proposition attitudes are intentional, uh, might be a called a grammatical form of intentionality. According to Fodor, uh, propositional attitudes should be analyzed as relations. For example, the verb in a 
sentence like John believes it is raining expresses a relations relation between John and something else and a token of that sentence is true. If John stand in the belief relation to that thing, John believes it is raining is true in virtue of belief making relation between John and a token of it is raining and it is the complement of a belief ascribable that uh, determines which internal formula is involved in its truth conditions. That is in effect it is raining, John believes it is raining a functions as an index which picks out of it is raining otherwise it is not. Uh, for example, elephants have wings that means, uh, John's belief is only about it is raining not it is about elephants have wings. Therefore, Fodor has been trying to say that as we have seen every kind of mental uh, capacities are productive and systematic and the year it is systematic and productive also. Uh, Fodor says that this kind of systems is internal representational which constitutes a language. Uh, that constitutes a language becomes a computational and uh, uh, that language is according to Fodor is a kind of qua language. Uh, this qua language uh, especially has a syntax and a semantic. Uh, that is specifying the language involved saying the what the properties are in which of which formula are well formed and what relations obtained between the formula and the things in the world. This is kind of relationship there in the case of computational theory of mind. Uh, even if uh, we do not have the idea about the the semantic uh, still the, the semantic is uh, taking care of uh, itself. This is also specifying the semantic for the uh, international realism systems by saying that some of its formula expresses uh, in the propositions. Whenever we express the propositions uh, that the uh, semantic city is there and if you do say uh, this then uh, we can make sense of the notion that proposition attitudes are relations to propositions. Therefore, they are uh, mediated relations to propositions with internal representations doing the mediating. Uh, but on the other hand, folk psychology shows that the proposition attitudes like belief, desire, etcetera that are real and that are part of the mental world of the human beings. Fodor defends folk psychology against the anti folk psychologist like Dennett and Churchland and also connectionist model of mind and uh, all of them have maintained that the belief uh, desire psychology is described as the human mind describable as the human mind is nothing but the brain. One of the connectionist model of mind uh, connectionist uh, like P. M. Churchland who states that mental states are identified with the brain set and so if our mental states are in some sense identical with those states then we have no reason to refute a materialism. But here Churchland holds that folk psychology which the displays proportional attitudes is similar with mathematical uh, physics which display numerical attitudes. For example, in folk psychology if x fears that P then X desires that not P. Dennett argues that we can attribute internal functional states to humans not on the basis of any neurophysiological knowledge which ordinarily people do not have, but on the basis of observation of how that person's behave in the light of what she or he perceives in his or her environment. Dennett puts it in different way, but he says that uh, this behavioral output we project upon the certain functional uh, way, uh, the way even if everyday 
our psychological explanations operates and therefore, from the eva Land and Renate thesis uh, it can be said that uh, attribute in the uh, head um, functions neither as a result of certain referring to a real internal or intervening in the processes. Uh, rather, uh, we make such uh, attributions as a result of guessing what part when speaking in a special intentional functions way the brain and the central nervous systems would have played in the complex production line of perceptual inputs, central processing and behavioral outputs, if we are an intentional engine. Uh, the, this intentional descriptions can be seen to be expression of a particular sort of attitudes or stance, which the humans have towards other humans and animals. Uh, Dennett's uh, explanation is like this, he says that behavioral can be at least sometimes explained and predicate by relying on ascription of the systems of beliefs and desires uh, like uh, intention, uh, hopes and fear etcetera. And he calls uh, such systems and predications, intentional explanations and predications in virtue of the intention of the items of belief and desires. In general, one can take off the intentional stance in order to explain and predict and so plan to take an action. But we should be clear that Dennett's view differ from Fodor's. As Dennett's make it clear that definition of intentional systems, Dennett uh, has given that this intentional uh, systems really have belief, desire, but that one can explain and predict their behavior by ascribing beliefs and desires to them. Here, Dennett points out that there are other stance besides the intentional uh, stance which we take off two things. For example, we might consider a machine from the point of view of its design and that is we might take of the design stand. Here there is a design is there because of the particular design we can call it a design stance and the like that there is a intentional stance also is there according to Dennett. If you want knows exactly how a computer or a machine is designed one can predict its it is designed response to any more one makes by following the propositional instruction of the program. For example, uh, if you see this example that will be very clear, the radio engineers are wearing the diagrams have symbols for each register and the capacit register, capacitor, transistor and etcetera, each with its task to perform and, and he or she can give a design stance predications which are generated by assuming that each the elements performs its tasks. The essential feature of a design stance uh, is that we make predications slowly from knowledge or assumptions about the symbols functional designs in uh, functional designs irrespective of the physical constitution of the particular object. Therefore, uh, here uh, there is a physical object are there. Therefore, then it is called it is a physical stance and uh, uh, design stance uh, then physical stance and this attitudes or stance is to consider something only in so far as it is made of certain material or certain type of material which have certain uh, properties. To take uh, up the physical stance or to human is to investigate their psychology or at a more basic level their physical level or chemistry and however, on the other hand the core of uh, Dresdek's account of intentionality lies in his account of the human brain and its perceptual organs as an information processing systems uh, which in turn is based uh, on intentional theory depends uh, developed by the cognitive theories. Uh, this information processing account of our mental life is purely 
physicalist thing in nature because for the districts accounts of intentionality of mental function is materialistic. The information processing input mechanism we call the sense senses and by treating the brain as an information processor, we can build up an account of intentional states such as knowledge and uh, belief. From here, Destex uh, suggesting is that human perceptual and cognitive system is based on the transformation of information for analysis of the digital form and it is the successful conversation of information into digital form that constitute the essence of cognitive activities. Now, we have to find out how physical uh, structure which carry uh, information in analog form can be transformed into the physical structure that carry information into digital uh, form. So, that this digitalized information becomes a true semantic content and so able to be the content of some mental act such as a belief. For example, humans acquire the correct concept of red by seeing two red objects and that is by having his or her visual perception simulated by a red object. Internally, some structures will be selected on the analogous registering structure for red simulation of the visual systems. If the persons concerned is also exposed to a good number of things which are not red, such structures become one which has semantic content and so on which is representing a utilizable concept of red to the person whose brain uh, contains structures only when these structures has been made precise and determined. In this way, it can be shown that semantic contents has nothing to do with the behavioral output of the uh, systems. Now, when this semantic content is utilized so as to guide behavior, it is employed as a map by which the person whose head contains this semantic structures finds his way about the world. And here there is a semanticity uh, relationship is there. Uh, this semantic contents becomes belief uh, in so far as they are used uh, as maps or represented to guide output of behavior. Therefore, uh, semantic content becomes a, uh, a cognitive content with when it gains a functional role and the, this professional attitudes can be defined in this way therefore, uh, there is a uh, computational model of mind. Uh, then uh, further is combining both this computational theory of mind and representational theory of mind in order to explain uh, in order to build uh, the gap between syntax and semantics. Uh, let us see this computational representational theory of mind. Fodor has adopted the computational representational theory of mind. And this theory is unlike the non-computational versions of representational theory of mind. This CRTM, computational representational theory of mind, makes a strong assumptions about mental processes. Mental processes are computational processes. Uh, therefore, the formal operations is defined over symbols according to uh, CRTM uh, and consequently the computational uh, representational theory is uh, based on two important assumptions. The first one is the language of thought and the second one is the uh, psychological explanation which is both uh, intentional and uh, nomological. That is to say that it involves laws like like generalization which refers to or quantify over the content of the propositional attitudes. 
Jacob calls as the nomic intentional character of mental causations. Uh, according to Dennett, mental representations are not uh, only constructed realistically, uh, but only as a sort of useful uh, predictive uh, psychological calculus and possibly uh, ascription of thoughts are simply attempts to uh, explain behavior in the face of massive uh, ignorance of the internal dynamics. For example, a small child may uh, speak grammatically correct English and we may say of her that she knows that corn is a noun. However, for this it would be inferred that the child actually deploys a mental representations and uh, representation that itself it literally means that a corn is a noun, but it could be said that some specific uh, cognitive architecture is installed in the child's brain because of which she implicitly uh, knows corn within quote to be a noun and not that uh, she manipulate any representations explicitly representing core is a noun. The child's knowledge is perhaps best viewed as simply a state uh, supervenient to any cognitive uh, architectures. And on the other hand, if you see uh, like for a representationalist, not only thought ascriptions do point uh, to specific mental representations, but also those that do not nevertheless uh, depend upon this uh, that do strictly that do. Uh, strictly speaking, the child does not think like the corn is noun, because she does not have any idea about the, the noun and also although in the case of verb also. Uh, rather, she literally thinks that it is permissible to utter please pass the corn, not please corn the plate. And here, uh, he is uh, making this distinction in the literal way. A representationalist will hold that the child's way with corn is the result of her processing specific mental representations in a certain ways. According to Fodor, computational representational theory of mind or CRTM provides twofold ways of type individuating mental uh, states and that is the mental states can be individuated either on the basis of the kind of the computational relations uh, they have or on the basis of content of the representations. Here the belief that the snow is white is differentiated from the belief that snow is black on the basis of difference in the content of a string of symbols and the express and that express uh, the corresponding propositions. It has corresponding relationship with uh, the fact whatever we say, because if it is not corresponding that may not be in the ideal way of explanations. The similar the belief uh, that the snow is white differentiated from the doubt that the snow is black on the account of differences in syntactically or computational relations. But if you see according to this computational uh, representational theory of mind, we will throw light on the three questions which are interrelated with each other. The first question is how can complex propositional attitudes have complex uh, semantic properties on the basis of simple semantic properties of their uh, 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 the second question is how can propositional attitudes generate other propositional attitudes. Thirdly, how can propositional attitudes be involved in the production of intentional uh, behavior. If we think fun individuals language of thought on the uh, model of a digital computers machine language, then the computer model of mind promises 
to provide an answer to these questions. It can explain how the semantic properties are assigned to the proportional attitudes and also have a causal properties as ascribed to, to them. In the language of thought, as we have seen, there are two ingredients namely a semantic ingredients and a syntactic ingredients. Thus, this language of thoughts provides with a reasonable explanation of the compositionality of uh, semantic properties of an individual's uh, proportional attitudes consistent with uh, the assumptions uh, of intentional uh, realism. Uh, the propositional uh, theory reduces the semantic uh, properties of an individual proportional attitude to the semantic properties of mental representations. Uh, that is the, the latter reduces in the semantic properties of symbols in the language of thought, which is a kind of machine language. As you have seen for the computational theory of mind, the mental state causally interacts among themselves and produce over behavior just by virtue of the their internal representations. And this means that for the type of individuation of mental states, in the form of the internal representations has uh, to be taken into account. Further argument is that we do not have to bother about the content of the mental state as such, because the formal aspect of the mental representation execute uh, to them. But again he says that if the mental processes are formal and then they have access only to the formal properties of such as representations of the environment as the, the senses. Uh, provided to it. Hence, uh, they have no access to the semantic properties of uh, the such as representation including properties of being true, having referent or indeed uh, the property of being representation of the environment. Uh, the idea that the content of, of a mental state can be reconstructed as an aspect of, of its forms and that is that mental states have different content only if they are relation to formally distinct mental representations and successfully explain the capacity of propositional uh, attitudes. The difference in, in the content of mental states implies that the internal representations are formally distinct. This means that if the mental states differ uh, in content they are also functionally uh, different, because they have functional relation to formally different takers of the formula of the internal language. Uh, that internal language as you know is called mentalis, which we have seen in this um, lectures. Uh, to be precise, um, according to further, the mental events differs in uh, their computational structure as well also. By using the notion of uh, computation content together. It is possible to explain how mental states are sensitive for uh, their contents in the causal interaction of the various uh, mental uh, states and the productions over behavior. This is one within the syntactic framework of the computational representational theory of uh, mind. Uh, this the semantic notions such as the truth and reference do not have any explanatory role in the uh, syntactic theory, because the semantic notions uh, because do not finger in the formal structure. Therefore, according to Fodor, the ideal mental processes are basically formal in the sense that they can be explained computationally according to formal uh, rule. Now, we have to see the intentional realism, because it is very important to, to explain about the Fodorian way of intentional realism, because Fodor and this intentional realism is really explaining how Fodor is combining the syntax and semantic in both the ways in the computational way. And now I will be explaining about the intentional realism, which is one of the important thesis of Fodor concept of mind, uh, how Fodor is building or establishing the relationship between mind and uh, body at the same time he is trying to show the how the 
syntax and semantics will go together in this um, intentional realism. A realistic theory of mind holds that intentional re realism uh, holds that intentional realism is a thesis that the mind is a primarily a representational system or individual's mind is just a system whose job is to deliver representation of the environment for the benefit of the individual whose mind it is. An important problem for intentional realism is to offer an account of how intentional states can be causally related to one another and to the world and to the behavior of the rational agents and it plays very vital role because it has some, some kind of relationship between the agent and the world and this intentionality is uh, admitted by Jerry Fodor as the real feature of the mental representations which can be computationally studied. But there is a distinction between the intentional realism and intentional irrealism. The weak sense of representation is intentional irrealism. According to intentional irrealism thesis, uh, which claims that the so called propositional attitudes can be thought of a mental representation of state of affairs. Uh, this is the about the intentional realism and we, which is you can say that weak sense of representationalism. But in the case of a strong sense of representationalism, which is the claim that the representational properties of propositional attitudes can take us some way towards understanding aspect of conscious experience. According to intentional realism, any utterance of sentences ascribing a semantic properties to an individual's uh, propositional attitudes express false properties and the intentional realist is also known as a eliminative materialist and according to whom no mental difference without some physical differences. Let us see what is eliminative materialism. According to eliminative materialism, they are eliminating the existence of mind and uh, there is nothing called mind at all. Uh, the thesis that our common sense perspective conception of psychological phenomena constitute a radically false theory, a theory so fundamentally defective that both the principles and the ontology of that theory will eventually be displaced rather than smoothly reduced by complicated neuroscience. And uh, this theory says that our folk concept of propositional attitudes with their uh, purported semantic properties are best compared to such uh, concept as the physical and chemical concept of chirolic and uh, or other chemical things which is happening uh, in the brain that all those concepts devoid of reference. Therefore, there are no such state as propositional attitude with semantic properties according to eliminative materialism. And uh, as you know P. F. Churchland is one of the famous eliminative one of the uh, we can say that one of the founder of this thesis. Uh, the non-factual version of intentional realism is the claim that uh, predicates that are used to refer to semantic properties of an individual's propositional attitudes simply do not stand for any genuine properties at all. And this version of intentional irrealism has been advocated by Stitch and according to him such predicates typically do not express properties at all. What this suggests is that there is no such thing as the property of believing that P the predicate is a believe that P does not express or correspond to a property. If this is right, then we have yet another reason for not thinking of folk psychological belief as state token, since a state of token is the instantiation of a property by an individual during a, a time a interval. Uh, and if there is no property, then there can be no state token. 
it is important to realize that the non existence of uh, belief properties uh, and belief state tokens do not entail that predicates of the form is belief that P are meaningless or never apply to anything else. And if you see the above non factualist interpretation of intentional realism is the influential view of Dennett who has introduced the concept of intentional stance and uh, which uh, uh, intentional uh, stance. The intentional stance says that the attribute proportional attitudes to a physical system uh, is not to attribute semantic properties to the systems. Rather, it consists in adopting a certain a heuristic stance towards it which in turn solves pragmatic goals. According to Dennett, the division to adopt the strategy is pragmatic and is not intrinsically right or wrong. Uh, therefore, the intentional stance view says that semantic properties of an individual's uh, properties attitudes arise from the stance uh, taken towards by the individual by an observer or an interpreter. Uh, then the intentional uh, realism is different from uh, both error theorism and non factualist realism, because intentional realist is committed to the view that the semantic properties of an individual's proportional attributes are genuine properties of the individual's brain. Then they say that we can ascribe three theses to intentional realism, and this three theses actually advocated by Per Jacob. And uh, firstly, uh, the semantic properties of an individual's uh, propositional attitudes are genuine of the individuals. And secondly, the semantic properties of an individual's utterance are derivative from the semantic properties of his or her propositional attitudes. Thirdly, uh, the semantic properties of an individual's uh, propositional attitudes must contribute to the production of the individual's intentional behavior. And if the semantic properties are genuine properties, then having a mind must make a causal differences. And we have to say that minded systems must be able to do things which systems lacking a mind must be unable to do. And if having a, a mind uh, having a mind did not make a causal differences. Now, the question is the what would it do to have a, a mind therefore, state of mind must be causes, but the fact that minds can occupy states with semantic properties can explain why systems having a mind can do things which uh, things which systems without a mind cannot do and this is the problem of mental causation. And the problem raised uh, by Jerry Fodor uh, shows that the intention realistic uh, dilemma. On the other hand, the intention realist is a physicalist. The mind must be a complex physical systems. On the other hand, he is also realistic about the minds. It is uh, the view of the anti reductionist that mind passes semantic properties which must make a causal differences. And this uh, the issues is closely related to the issues of reducibility of a uh, system's semantic properties to its non semantic properties. According to Jacob, uh, there are two ways uh, one can think about uh, reduction. For example, water turned to be identical to H2O molecules and the genes turns out to be nothing but DNA molecules. Such identities are nomic in the sense that what is claimed is that nothing would be water unless it were composed of H2O molecules. On the other hand, semantic properties are reduced to non semantic properties on the ground that the latter provide necessary and sufficient 
non semantic condition for the position of semantic uh, properties. Therefore, uh, the intentional realist like Fodor tries to bridge the gap between semantic properties and non semantic properties. Uh, this is the main dilemma of the intentional uh, realist and uh, in order to eradicate this dilemma, we have to see uh, some of the important aspects of uh, especially non reductionistic uh, thesis uh, of mind, which will give the exact explanation of mind as well as the exact explanation of the body and exact explanation of syntax and exa exact explanation of semantics. Uh, although they go together, uh, bridge between uh, semantic and uh, non semantic is very uh, difficult, uh, but uh, they go together, they have close relationship that does not mean that we can bridge the uh, gap, but the gap is there. Uh, that gap is itself is making mind as different uh, from the body. So, now, I will uh, stop this here on representationalism and uh, uh, some of the things I will be discussing in uh, next uh, lectures and my colleagues Professor Panda will be explaining in his lectures on related to this topics. Uh, thank you very much.